Alright folks, so I got another great video for you guys today. Those of you who uh, fly 1.3 gigahertz video transmitters with your DJI NASA Lite or NASA V1. You'll see I got the GPS unit right here. Well, we're going to go ahead and install uh, Pepsi Cola's saw filter mod. A guy by the name of Pepsi Cola on RC Groups came up with this. And he has kind of, in a strange way, deleted all of his information about it. So I am going to try and do the mod myself and uh, show you guys how to do it. So the first thing that we need to do is open up the back of the GPS. And that can be easily opened with um, a Torx T4 driver. If I don't drop it. I recommend for doing stuff like this to get like a specialty bit set for opening things like cell phones. All right, pull the back off, there we go. All right, folks, now the next thing we have to do is we need to make two modifications. First thing we need to do is we need to find the trace coming off of pin 11 on this guy, which is the GPS receiver. There'll be this trace that goes right to the GPS antenna. We need to, as creepy as it sounds, we need to cut that trace. And this is kind of the point of no return. So if you're not going to be ready to connect those back up, don't do this mod. Alright, so we've cut pin 11, where it goes from the receiver to this blob. And you'll notice that that blob connects over to this which is the actual patch antenna for the GPS. But now that we've cut that pin, we need to also scratch into this a little bit so that we can have a connection for ground because this copper plate right here, this is the ground plane. So we just need to scrape a little bit of the enamel off enough so that we can tack a wire onto there. We could probably also use pin 12, but this will help us prevent from getting any short circuits between pin 11 and 12, which would make us lose GPS signal completely. Okay, next step is to solder the saw filter in place. Now this is the saw filter, and for size comparison, here's my X-Acto knife. This thing is massively tiny, and it's got four pads on it that I'm gonna have to solder. And what I'm going to do to solder them is I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to take some stranded wire and pull single strands out of those stranded wire because they're probably going to be upwards of 34 or 38 gauge so that I can solder them on. Now let's consult the data sheet really quick for which pads are which and then we'll get back to soldering this. All right, folks, so here we have the data sheet for the saw filter that I used. Now, take a good note of that part number. It's a part number I picked with a very low insertion loss, so it means very little energy is lost going into the filter, which is good for receive applications. Now, you'll notice also that uh, the attenuation table here shows the highest attenuation right around 1575 megahertz which is GPS frequency, and we want anything anywhere near GPS frequency to be filtered out stronger than anything else. So let's scroll down a little bit and look at the pin configuration. This chart is going to show us what pins do what on the saw filter and where we need to solder what. So pin number one, which is this lone pin by itself, that is in, that is where the signal is going to go from the antenna. Pin number four is out. Out is going to go to the receiver, and the rest of the pins are ground, so they can be, any of them can be connected to the ground plane 
but you only need one of them to be connected because they're all joined inside the filter itself. Okay, now those two graphs are pretty great. That graph shows you attenuation. You'll see 1575 right on our GPS band, zero attenuation, but everything else drops off very rapidly and gets muted. Uh, that's just another attenuation graph that shows us what we already know. And output impedance and input impedance graphs, we don't really need to worry about too much. So it looks like this saw filter is exactly the one we need to use. Okay, so the two pins that we are worried about are input, output, and ground. First one is input, and it is the single pin, or the single pad, closest to the camera. The second is going to be output, and that is pad number four, which is on the right-hand column, and it is the second one up. Any other of those are going to be ground and will be soldered to our ground plane. So I'm going to go ahead and do the soldering off camera, uh, mostly because we're going to really need the dexterity and the camera's in my way, but I will show you exactly what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so there is the filter sitting in my hand. And that's the finished product. That's what we're going to install in the GPS. And you're right, it is nuts tiny. Let's zoom in a little bit to take a look at that pin configuration one last time. All right, great. So we've got it all set up. We've got the input connected to the lone pin, the output connected to the upper right-hand corner, and the ground connected to any other of the pins. So we can go ahead and install it right away. All right, so there's the wires that I've soldered to the filter, and I've put a little drop of liquid electrical tape over there so they don't break off, and also so they don't short. Now, notice there are three uh, sides here. You've got the input, the output, and the ground. These need to be connected in a very particular order in order to properly filter the GPS signal. The input pin needs to be connected to pin 11, which is right behind that trace that we scraped out. The output pin to this button that goes to the antenna. And the ground uh, somewhere, anywhere here on the ground plane. So why don't I go ahead and do that, and I will show you guys what that looks like when I'm done. Alright guys, so this is how it should look when it's all done. Because this is a GPS receiver, we will have the input coming from the antenna. And we're going to have the output going directly to the receiver module and the ground soldered to the ground plane that we scratched out. Next thing you should do is take a look at these wires, make sure that none of them are shorted, none of them are contacting areas that they shouldn't be, and then I'm going to go ahead and take some liquid electrical tape and put a huge glop of that over the saw filter so that nothing uh, gets jostled out of place in flight or shorts or any, any other bad stuff happens. All right, so I just got back in from outside testing out the GPS performance. And long story short, this thing's awesome with the saw filter in it. It works perfectly. It locked on with my uh, watt and a half 1.3 gigahertz transmitter within about 45 seconds. I mean, it's really quite amazing. Uh, even when I removed the low pass filters that I chained to be kind of my. Um, other easier way of putting in a saw filter but then I realized there was no other way around it there is just too much interference that the NASA itself outputs in that same band so we were gonna have to go with a saw filter and it worked amazing so if you would like to see more videos guys please don't forget to rate comment subscribe so I can keep making more for you and I'll see you next time